Hi, my name is Mark Bailey. I'm an application engineer here at Agilent Technologies. And today I'd like to talk to you about measuring force, both dynamic force and static force. So what do I mean by dynamic force? Well, think of a string on a guitar that's plucked and it's vibrating, uh, going back and forth. You want to measure the force that's being generated by that. Maybe the force on an airplane wing where it's bouncing around, or a microphone where you're talking to it and it's, it's picking up the, uh, the signal. There's a, a couple of different sensors that are used for this. One of them is a piezo sensor. It's basically a crystalline structure that allows a, that, that generates a voltage as it's, a, as it's tweaked on. It's a little like your old uh, phonograph uh, records where they used to have a crystal and then a little needle and as the needle vibrated in the, uh, in the grooves, it generated a voltage coming out of the crystal. Okay, so if you look on the voltmeter, you'll notice that I'm measuring basically zero volts while it's sitting here uh, just dead. As soon as I pick it up and start twisting on it and banging it around, you'll notice that it's generating a voltage. But as soon as I quit doing that, it drops back to zero volts. Okay, I actually captured that. I sat there and kind of did this and just banged on it and captured it with the multimeter and brought that information in and plotted it out. And if you look on the screen, you can see that each time I whacked it, it got another pulse on it. But then as soon as I stopped banging on it, it went to zero. So great for dynamic, but not very good for static measurement. What do I mean by static measurement? Well, think about scale, a scale. You step on the scale, it weighs you. In my case, it says it's 200 plus pounds. Uh, and what you get is a constant measurement, even though things aren't changing. It's not dynamic, rather it's static. So I'm gonna show you a demonstration of making static measurements using something called a strain gauge. So let me go ahead and set that up. Okay, so we're set up to make a uh, static strain measurement or force measurement. Uh, we're gonna do that using a, something called a strain gauge. Uh, strain gauge is basically just a bunch of traces laid down on a little plastic substrate going back and forth and back and forth and you get enough distance there and it actually turns into a pretty good sized resistor. Uh, 350 ohms is a fairly standard value and that's what we have here. Usually, uh, so, so when a strain gauge gets, gets elongated, the resistance goes up and when it gets compressed, the resistance goes down. The way people usually measure this is they put it into something called a Wheatstone bridge. They have an excitation voltage, they have a balanced bridge, and one, two, or four legs have strain gauges in them, and they measure a voltage across it. Well, it's pretty complicated. What I'm going to show you is with the 34411A, we can take a four-wire ohm measurement of that same strain gauge and get a similar result. So, I've got my strain gauge here. I'm running four wires back for a four-wire ohm measurement on it, and you can see I've got a stable reading around 349. As I push on the cantilever, it goes into uh, tension on the strain gauge and it goes up. And as I come in and lift it, now I'm going into compression and the number goes down. And then when I go back to uh, the stable zero position, it comes back to where it was before. Okay, so think of it being a weight, you know, and I'm standing on the scale and I'm pushing it down and the number goes up and I can measure that. Now, we're actually able to measure micro strain if we do all the appropriate things with gauge factors and calculations and stuff. But I'm just going to show you the principle here first. Now, it shows up even better if I go into null. And now I've nulled out that initial stable position. And now it's even more clear. As I push down on it, the numbers go up. As I lift on it, the numbers go down. OK, it goes negative. What I'd like to do now is go ahead and set up uh, my computer to take control of the 34411A. 34411A has a built-in uh, web uh, server, and with my web browser, I'm going to go in and take control of the instrument. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, so here's my web browser. I'm going to go into the browser control, and I want to allow full control, so I go ahead and click that. There it is monitoring the multimeter, and I'm getting readings. I come down here, and I set up the... Uh, control panel so that I can adjust it. Um, I'm going to want to be in four wire ohms. I've got offset compensation off. Uh, find B in auto range. I'm actually going to go pretty fast. I'm going to change this to 0 .006 PLC, which is about a thousand readings a second. And I'm going to enable null so that sure enough I'm still in zero. I want to trigger uh, immediately. I'm going to take um, oh about 10,000 counts I'm going to set it up for. I doubt if I'll take that many counts, but I'll set it up for it. And I'm going to go ahead and apply that to the instrument. Okay, so my instrument's changed. It's set up and ready to go on this, uh, the measurement. What I'm going to do is start the measurement, and then I'm going to bend my cantilever and then let it bounce back up and down and capture that, uh, that kind of resonance. So I start the measurement. And I push down on the thing. Let it bounce for a while. Okay. Stop the measurement. And now I'm going to go in and view the data. I should have a bunch of data now that came from that. Okay, and I'm going to get the data. 
and the data fills up the window. I'm going to come in here and capture the data. I'm going to do a control A to highlight it all, a control C to capture it. And now I'm going to go to an Excel spreadsheet and I'm going to populate that spreadsheet with that information. So do a control V. And what I want to do is actually go in and graph it. So I'm going to go to where my graphing is, grab a graph, do the graph. And lo and behold, you can see what all was going on. As I expand this out, you can really see what was going on with the measurement. Okay. Went up, I held it, let go, and it vibrated down. Okay, so we've seen uh, both dynamic and static measurements using uh, either PAs or uh, sensors in the case of dynamic, or in static, uh, static force measurements, we've used a strain gauge measurement. Hope this was clear, and I thank you for joining me. I uh, look forward to seeing you again next time.